Yo, Mamma Jammas, what's up? I have a new episode of Comic Reviews of Fate. This week, I'm actually talking about the comics that came out this week. Amazing. I'm not late on this. Uh, of course, they're brought to you by my own comic book I self-publish, Red Knight. Rish issue 6 is out, written by me, and drawn by the amazing Shiloh Penfield. Uh, you can order it at two places. My Etsy shop at etsymanospublishing.com and primalpapercomics.com. And... I think it's pretty good, and I'm totally not biased. Now, here are some other comics that I think are good, and I had nothing to do with making them. Um, let's start with that Brian Michael Bendis fellow. He has a couple books out this week, and this is Uncanny X-Men number one with uh, Chris Pacillo, who I've always been a fan of um, since, um, God, since uh, the Death Miniseries, uh, High Cost of Living. I've always loved his work. I don't see anybody else draw like him in at least mainstream comics. There's just such a fun and energetic vibe to his work. I mean, just people walking down a hall is just cool in his work. Now, of course, you know what uh, Bendis is doing with the other X-Men book, All New X-Men. Uh, this is totally unrelated. This is, well, they're all kind of related. But... Cyclops has started his own team, and um, he's going, screw you guys, I'm doing this my own way. Uh, and he's got, let's see, he's got uh, Emma Frost, Magneto, uh, Magic, and some new kids on the block. Uh, this one character who can, I think she can do freeze times or something like that. Uh, let's see, Tempest, and a young healer who hasn't made up his code name yet, which I thought was kind of an interesting... Uh, bit because you know everybody like the second they decide to be a superhero or villain has a code name like right there oh uh, this guy's still thinking about it that's kind of funny but uh, anyway the members of shield oh uh, let's see marie hill and nick fury jr and a guy that looks like colton <laughs> uh come to uh one of the cells where someone has volunteered to surrender so they could talk to uh, Maria Hill, and this mysterious fellow is uh, explaining to her how dangerous Cyclops is now that he's uh, off and escaped, and he's doing his own stuff right here. Well, what he tells her is that he finds him dangerous, and he knows his weaknesses. Uh, and of course, it cuts back and forth from that conversation to this cool action sequence where. Uh, Cyclops and the new Uncanny X-Men are trying to get the save the day uh, in their own way, where they come across this uh, young guy who has what you would think is kind of a harmless mutant power. He just makes balls appear out of nowhere. Uh, and then he's attacked by Sentinels, which uh, you know is this really cool action sequence. Uh, I didn't even realize that... Uh, I, I guess I'd forgotten that... Magneto's powers have been uh, decreased lately. Well, I don't want to give away like who this mysterious fellow is that uh, Maria Hill is talking to, but you do find out uh, what a cool way to start this series. So, I might be reading some X-Men books. Because um, I'm excited about the all-new X-Men. I haven't read it yet, but I keep hearing how brilliant it is. And I'm very interested in... It. I think it's Pete Wood. Uh, Pete Wood's uh, doing uh, X-Men with uh, Storm and the all-female cast. Uh, I, th I think that's the name of the uh, writers doing it. But anyway, I don't care. I'm going to I'm gonna pick it up. Uh, maybe it's Brian Wood. I don't know. But I, I'm, I'm getting it. Oh, this is five RAM chips. What a great start. Uh, I loved it a lot. Now, uh, let's go to Avengers Assemble number 12. It's Brian Wood. Brian Wood. Haha, -ha, I got it eventually, I think. Uh, this is Kelly Sue DeConnick and, uh, oh, Pete Woods. That's where I was thinking. Oh, uh, that's why I had that name on in my brain. Uh, this is dealing with the Black Widow's Ledger, which is a number of names that she feels kind of bad killing back when she was uh, brainwashed, brainwashed uh, by the USSR. I'm just kidding. Anyway, uh, the first scene actually deals with her assassinating... This one guy who's come up with a brilliant, great way uh, to come up with, like, armies of unstoppable atomic supermen. Uh, he can turn them into lizard people. So, 
she's hired to kill him before he finishes this project. So she does, right in front of his wife. Oh, and you know what? He doesn't seem like an evil guy, so it does, you know, show you how dark uh, this period in her life was. Well, cut to the present, and she's been called by the, this guy's family because they know who she is, and she has this agreement with a number of people that she's trying to make good on uh, what she considers to be her past sins. So, uh, the daughter, that, that man, that scientist's daughter, uh, their family lives in Serbia, and she's disappeared uh, underground uh, with... It has something to do with this drug that's been, like, oh, it's just terrible, from what I understand. Um, and they feel like when she went to go and investigate it, she disappeared, uh, taken by mysterious, creepy people. So, uh, Black Widow, Hawkeye, and Spider-Woman go to investigate, and, well, they find an army of atomic lizard supermen. So, I'm not going to give away that, that there's a pretty cool plot twist at the end of this one, so um, I do recommend picking it up. Uh, it, I hope this book isn't getting uh, overshadowed by some of the other Avengers titles, you know, all 69 of them out there. Uh, this one's definitely uh, worth the read. It, this one's a lot of fun. I'm going to give this one five ram chips. I actually read this. Uh, this and Uncanny X-Men, I read both, like, twice. Uh, I really enjoyed them a lot. Uh, and actually, I read this one twice. I actually, I read a lot of stuff twice. Um, this is Avengers Bureau, number one. By Brian Michael Bendis and Mike Oming. And this picks up from um, Powers, where last we met, uh, uh, the gods almost destroyed the world, and the government decides to make uh, dealing with Powers a federal case, a federal uh, uh, law. So, Dina Pilgrim, who has been a Fed, uh, decides to, in, uh, he, she decides to bring in uh, Christian Walker. And their first case together is this super-powered guy selling his sperm online, uh, which sounds cool, right? Uh, but it's been making women's wombs explode. And it, it can even impregnate men. He's actually, it, and the sperm is actually dangerous to human contact. So it doesn't really talk about... that. We don't really know yet if he knows that this stuff is so dangerous or he doesn't care. Either way, they got to bring him in. Meanwhile, we do get some backstory as to how the hell Dina Pilgrim, who hates the FBI, who hates authority, uh, became a, a federal agent. And it's actually, it's, it's a cool enough story to be the issue itself. But uh, it's definitely a good starting point. Um, for those of you who haven't been buying the Power Series, uh, I would just say, pick this up. I think it's a good starting point. Uh, but just except the fact that stuff has happened before. So if you're a little confused, go, well, I'm sure I'll find out somehow. Uh, totally check this out. This is a great, great book. Uh, I miss Powers, and I've been told by the letters column in the back that uh, they're going to make it up to us for all the lateness they've had by doing another issue in two weeks. So there'll be two Powers issues in the same month. Can't wait. Five Ram Chips. And... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, issue 18. And that is by the same crew as usual. Kevin Eastman and Tom Waltz uh, are uh, writing the story. Ben Bates is doing the artwork. Now, the Turtles, let's see, they've been, they've been following this uh, Professor Honeycutt, who is tied into a lot of this mysterious stuff going off over at um, uh, Stockgen. And, of course... Uh, Baxter Stockman is tied to General Krang, and they're trying to figure out who, what the connection is. While they're like, uh, while April and the Turtles and Casey Jones are uh, kind of investigating and, and, and having a conversation with them, these elf-like aliens uh, show up, uh, the neutrinos, and they they take the professor, and they follow the Ninja Turtles follow, and they end up through a wormhole, and they end up on the planet Neutrino. Neutrino is the planet that uh, Krang has been, you know, at war with and trying to take over, uh, if he hasn't already, really. Uh, it looks pretty bad. Uh, I think his, I think he's been occupying that planet. So, uh, yeah, everybody's kind of, like, 
in the mix of what the hell are we doing on another planet? Uh, saving elf-like princesses. It's it's quite a departure from what, how the series has been. The series has been mostly fairly realistic, so this is the first real jump our uh, turtle heroes have had, jumping into like the more fantastic elements of you know this universe. So we find out more about Honeycut. He actually is a human robot hybrid. He can switch back and forth, which is kind of cool. Um, the turtle's reaction is pretty priceless, actually. Um, also, speaking of reactions. When April in Casey Jones tells, let's see, Splinter what happened, and they disappeared in this wormhole, it was really terrible, he, like, flips out. And, yeah, you can see on the faces of Casey Jones and April, uh, wow, we've never seen Splinter show a emotion before. What the hell? So, uh, this is a really interesting issue. It's very well written. Uh, I'm going to give this four Ram Chips, uh, dug a lot, and I got the Eastman cover. I never somehow get the Eastman cover, so I was pretty happy with that. I think that's it for now. Push the button, Lindsay.